This presentation is about how to communicate effectively when faced with misinformation and myths. The material is based on presentations created by John Cook. In the next few minutes, you'll hear about some backfire effects our brains are susceptible to and how to take them into account when debunking misinformation. You'll also hear about the characteristics of science denial and the fact myth fallacy structure of a successful debunking. We form mental models in our brain about the world around us. The different bits and pieces fit together and interact with each other, much like the gear wheels shown here. These mental models can work against us when we, for example, hear information like the side effects are worse than the flu, followed by an explanation why that isn't really the case and that a sore arm will most likely be the worst side effect. Especially when we are not paying close enough attention, the familiarity backfire effect can kick in. What then often happens as time goes by is that people only remember what they heard first, while the rest fades. So what many people will remember is that the side effects are worse than the flu, which is of course not really ideal, as that is the misinformation. Something else which can happen is the continued influence effect. Imagine a court case where a suspect was presented who fits very well in your mental model of what happened. He's the red gear wheel in the middle. But nonetheless, he gets acquitted, perhaps because of insufficient evidence. This leaves a big gaping hole in your mental model. And this is something our mind doesn't like. So what happens? The initial suspect, though acquitted, slips right back into that empty space. Well, he may have done it after all, even though they couldn't prove it. So, what now? There's an option to avoid this from happening. Present another and better suspect, one who perhaps was found with blood on his hand or who left clear fingerprints. If the alternative suspect fits your mental model at least as well, if not better than the initial one, you'll fill that empty space and stick. This is the golden rule of debunking. Fight sticky myths with even stickier facts. And even if this sounds easy, it actually isn't, as Chip and Dan Heath explain in their book, Made to Stick. To really stick, a fact needs to be simple, unexpected, credible, of course, as concrete as possible, emotional, and ideally wrapped up in a story. These terms can be remembered as success. The usual reaction to science-related misinformation is to explain the science and to explain it even more and more. This isn't always very effective. This is where inoculation comes into play. It adds an explanation of how the science gets distorted. This special type of inoculation is comparable to getting vaccinated, where your body gets exposed to an inactive or weak strain of a virus. In our case, the inoculation combines the exposure to a weak form of the misinformation with explaining the fallacy or misconception. There are three elements in an effective debunking. Always start with the fact to make this the first thing people hear or read. Next, mention the misinformation, but proceed it with a warning that what comes next is wrong. Finally, explain the fallacy inherent in the misconception. Scientific misinformation usually comes with one or more of the five characteristics of science denial. Fake experts are used, logical fallacies are in play, as are impossible expectations. Cherry picking is rampant, and if everything else fails, conspiracy theories make an appearance. In our online course Denial 101X, we refer to these characteristics as flick. 
we also have a chart which includes some subcategories. You have a magnified minority below fake experts where often the same handful of contrarians get cited. And there are several logical fallacies where you'll often find red herrings which are there to distract, misrepresentations where what somebody said gets mangled beyond recognition. They jump to conclusions and are prone to false dichotomies where everything is either black or white, but never gray. Let's now look at an example based on a study by John Cook and colleagues published in 2017. We know from studies that the scientific consensus about human-caused climate change is anything between 90 and 100 percent, with several studies converging on 97 percent. But there's also the Global Warming Petition Project that states that more than 31,000 American scientists are disagreeing with the notion that there is convincing evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, methane or other greenhouse gases is causing or will in the foreseeable future cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere. When people get presented with both the 97% consensus information and the more than 31,000 signatures to the petition project, this is what happens. If they are liberal-minded, their perception of the consensus basically stays the same. The misinformation doesn't have an effect. But the more conservative they are, the more it lowers their perceived consensus, which wasn't all that high to begin with. John also had an intervention in his study in which he explained the concept of fake experts to manufacture doubt about the science. He used an example from the tobacco industry where they had ads claiming things like more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. In these cases, a common tactic for industry groups and organizations is to manufacture doubt about the science through the promotion of fake experts. Fake experts are spokespeople who convey the impression of expertise in a given area without possessing actual relevant experience. When people, armed with this inoculation about fake experts, received the information about the petition project, the misinformation was essentially neutralized so that it no longer negatively affected the perceived consensus. It seems people just don't like to be misled, regardless of where they fall on the political spectrum. Here is a simpler way to debunk this misinformation. Start with the fact that between 90 and 100% of climate experts agree that humans are mostly responsible for current global warming. Include a memorable graphic if you have one handy. Next. Mention the myth about the 31,000 scientists who disagree with the consensus. Then explain the fallacy that this invokes fake experts and a magnified minority, because just about 0.1% of signees are actively publishing climate scientists while most work in other fields. In our massive open online course, Denial 101X, we have more information about how and why the science gets distorted and how to effectively debunk this misinformation. And while the course is focused on climate science, the techniques can be applied to other areas as well. The MOOC is offered almost all the time, alternating between seven weeks long paced and longer running self-paced versions. We have a summary list of facts, myths and fallacies explained in Denial 101X on Skeptical Science. The page also includes the video lectures from the MOOC. Based on this page, I put together a PowerPoint slide deck where each myth is accompanied by a graphic and the debunking follows the fact-myth-fallacy format. This might be something you could tag on or have readily available for Q&A sessions at the end of your talks. If your talk is not about climate change, the format could still be useful and you could adapt it to your topic. That's it for me. Thanks a lot for your attention.